The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. When they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then he took him up, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you all of this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me. I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God. Him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they shall support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, we are celebrating this Mass of the first Sunday of Lent. During the season of Lent, we strive to know God more deeply, to love God more intimately, and to follow Jesus more closely. Very interesting that on this first Sunday of Lent, Jesus decided to take us to the desert. Jesus decided to invite us to have the same spiritual experience he had when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, after which he was hungry. The desert is a place of desolation. The desert is a place of prayer. The desert is a place of solitude. And the desert is a place where someone can fight with the forces of nature and with also spiritual forces as in the case of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Luke made it very clear to us 
in our gospel reading. From Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Luke began this way. That Jesus returned from Jordan. When you hear Jordan, what comes to our mind is the baptism of Jesus. You can always relate the baptism of Jesus with the temptation of our blessed Lord. If you read the account of the baptism of Jesus from Luke chapter 4, especially verses 21 and 22, the scripture said, Jesus, after his baptism, the Holy Spirit in the form of dove descended upon him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son to whom I am well pleased. And immediately the same spirit that descended upon him led him to the desert. A very important connection between the baptism of Jesus and the temptation of Christ. Connected, he received the power of his God, the blessings of his heavenly father. His father said, I love you. Go forward. Go for the mission for which I have called you. I will be with you. You are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. Go. He went because the father had sent him. The spirit drove him into the desert. And there, Jesus prayed. He prayed. For 40 days, and he fasted. For 40 nights, and then came the evil one. Is it necessary that the blessed Lord should have been tempted? Was it necessary? Even though he's fully God, he's fully man and fully God, was it necessary? Because Jesus was like us in everything except sin. Was it necessary? Was it necessary that Jesus should have, been, should have received the baptism from John the Baptist? It was not necessary for him as Jesus. But for us, yes. For us, he received baptism. And for us, he was tempted in our opening prayer every morning during Lent, priests, deacons, religious, we began by saying, Jesus was tempted and suffered for us. Jesus was tempted and suffered for us in our invitation prayer to the Psalms. Jesus decided to identify with us. For him to save us, he needed to descend where we are. That was why he was tempted. He needed to experience our brokenness. He needed to Feel our pains for him to deliver the lost sheep. He needed to descend where the lost sheep was. For Jesus to understand the plight of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 verses 11 to 34, he needed to experience what the prodigal son 
experienced. For him to understand the situation of Mary Magdalene, the woman that was caught in adultery, Jesus needed to be tempted as Mary Magdalene was tempted. That was why the author of the, book, of the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, said that Jesus suffered and was tempted so as to understand his brethren. And the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 15, the scripture indicated he was tempted like any one of us. Now, what are the contents of the temptation of Jesus? Jesus was tempted because he had a body like you and I. Bodily temptation. Temptation that will come to us because of our nature as bodied creatures. He was hungry, and the devil started from there to tempt the blessed Lord. If you are the Son of God, convert these stones to become bread. Jesus said, it is not by bread alone that man liveth, but through the works that comes from the mouth of God. We are tempted because we are embodied, we are bodied beings. The Lord is asking us to wake up. Our temptations will come from the material things of this world. The devil will pre 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 represent them as the best. The devil will cause obstacles to us because of who we are as human beings. We ought to, like Jesus, tell the devil, yes, this thing is good, this food is good, this drink is good, this alcohol is wonderful, this place is marvelous, but my life does not end and cannot be defined by material things of this world. That is the answer Jesus gave. My life cannot be defined only from the things of this world. He who created me is greater. The giver of the gift is greater than the gift itself. He who gave me my body is greater than my body. And therefore, I should not use my body to offend against my God. And the devil then went, came again. He, he will not stop to deal with us. After one, he will come again. You are not free. He will continue. In the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1, the scripture said, My son, if you have intentionally decided to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal. The devil will come again. And the devil told him, now, I'll give you all this glory, glory. I will give it to you. If you can only worship me, the glories of this world. I remember vividly my first year as a priest, my very first assignment in a, a church before the bishop decided to take me to walk with him. For six months I was in that church. There were these women who swept the church every Monday morning. And I decided to join them. And after we swept the church as a young priest, we said our prayers. We will all kneel very close to the altar and we will pray. A lady, I will never forget her, she prayed and said, Lord, preserve our dear Father Ben. 
when the devil will show him the glories of this world, may you preserve his life. May you preserve his sanctity. The devil showed Jesus and said, only if you can worship me. The devil does that every day. But Jesus answered, you should not. You should only worship the Lord your God. Him alone shall you serve. Him alone shall you serve. Brothers and sisters, the devil will show us the things that will prevent us from serving God. Let us shun the actions and the intentions of the devil. The third one, the devil took him to the uppermost place in Jerusalem and showed him everything and said, now I challenge you, you are powerful. Come down, your God will save you. Jesus did not accept to tempt his God or to show the power that he had. Even the devil quoted Psalm 91. He will preserve your feet so that you will not be, you will not be harmed. Jesus said, be careful. Do not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus told the devil, I am God. You cannot tempt me. Beloved brothers, sometimes the devil tempts us with our power. <laughs> you have power. You do. Every one of us. In one way or the other, you have some strength and some power you control. In your families, in your workplaces, in your undertakings, you have some power that you control. How do you use your power? Jesus shunned the evil one. But as our Lenten way of proceeding, if I may use the vocabulary of St. Ignatius of Loyola, our way of proceeding this Lent, we know we are tempted. I know I'm tempted. Deacon is tempted. Every one of us here, we are tempted. What can help us to overcome temptation? is seen in the scriptures. The first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26. Very interesting. Moses revealed the way we can avoid temptation. The Israelites were tempted because they arrived at the promised land. They forgot what happened. They forgot all that God had done in their life. Moses said, the priests, please remind the people of who they are. Remembering who you are. Remembering that you are a child of God. Remembering your identity as a child of God, as a deacon, as a priest, as a minister in the church, as a son and daughter of God. If you remember that, you will avoid many temptations. Remembering that you are meant for heaven, Paul said in Philippians 3.20, our homeland is in heaven. Remembering that we help you to avoid temptations. In our second reading from the letter to the Romans chapter 8, chapter 10 from verse 8, Paul said, believe in God. Those who believe in God will always succeed, will always be saved. If you believe as Jesus did, you will overcome temptations. Believing in our God. Then, prayer, as we see, as we have seen in our gospel reading, mortification will help us. That was what helped Jesus. He prayed. He mortified himself. St. Leo the Great said, fasting and mortification is not only the reduction of food, but the elimination of vice six. You tell yourself, I will not do this. And tell yourself, no, 
you will be able to overcome temptations. If you say your rosary devotely every day, I said devotely. It's not, hey, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with mm, ah. Where am I? No. If you say it devoutly, your rosary, you will overcome many temptations. Padre Pio said, this is our weapon, the rosary. If you say it, you will overcome temptations. And if you know your scriptures, you will fight against the devil. And if you love God and love your neighbor, you will overcome temptations. If I love you truly, Carlos, I will never do something evil against you. If I do something evil against you, if I say something wrong about you, I don't think that I love you so much. If I love you, I will make effort to begin to change my vocabulary about you. I will make effort to continue to change the way I see you. I will see you with the eyes of Jesus. I will not see you with my own sinful eyes. I will see you with the eyes of the blessed Lord. And I will not do evil against you because Jesus will never do evil against you. Thank you.